All right, good morning. Many thanks for joining us on Super Dawn Weekend here on Super Screen. Now, um, it's always a weekend edition. It's always a special edition uh, where we bring you issues that are close to the hearts of Nigerians. You know, um, we've talked about power here, we've talked about education, we've talked about election, we've talked about politics, we've talked about the economy because we bring these issues that are close to your heart to the forefront and that's what we do here on Super Dawn Weekend. I am Precious Amayu. We're going to take a break now and when we return we'll start a conversation on the program. Do stay with us. Super Screen Television is now on Star Times Channel 173. Now our tentacles are extended to give you the very best of sports, news, entertainment shows, current affairs, blockbuster movies, and lots more. Tune in to Star Times Channel 173 and enjoy the very best of Super Screen Television. Now you're talking.
All right, welcome back and many thanks for staying with us on the program. You're still watching Super Dawn Weekend here on Super Screen Television. And today um, we're going to be bringing this conversation close to you. We're, we're speaking to you personally today. We want to hear from you. You know, we're talking one-on-one -on -one today and we want to hear from you. Um, we're looking at the presidential debate, ahead of the presidential, presidential debate. We want to know the qualities you will want in your preferred candidate. What are the qualities you see in your preferred candidate and what are the qualities if you have not made up your mind yet, what are the qualities you want to see in your preferred candidates today at the debate? Um, you will recall that on December, Friday, December 14, um, five political parties, um, the vice presidential candidates of five political parties, you know, had a debate in Abuja, and it was it was organized by the ND, uh, the Nigerian uh, debate organization, and then you also had, you know, um, the broadcast broadcasting organization of Nigeria supporting that, and you know, we had um, the, the vice president. You know, the current vice president of the country, Yemi Oshimanjo, of the All Progressives Congress, you know, being part of that debate. We had Peter Rubi of the PDP. Uh, we had Omar Getsu of the Young Progressive Party, YPP. Uh, we had um, Galadima, Ganiyu Galadima of the Alliance for, Allied, sorry, Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, ACPN, as well as um, Khadija Abdullahi Iya of the Alliance for New Nigeria. Now, we had uh, those vice presidential candidates come together to uh, have a debate. They debated on issues like the economy, security, um, full subsidy, power supply. There were a lot of issues that were raised, raised foreign direct investment, unemployment. You know, they had a debate on those issues. And many Nigerians sh chose who, they, who was their preferred candidate or who they thought won at that debate. But today, the presidential candidates of those parties are expected to also be debating on those issues today. Um, Muhammad, President Muhammad Buhari is of the All Progressives Congress, the ruling party, is expected at that debate. Um, Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party is also expected at that debate. We have Obi Ezekwisili, the former Minister of uh, Education, also respected. She is a presidential candidate of the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, ACP. And we have Kingsley Mogalu, um, of the, the former deputy governor of the CBN, who is of the Young Progressives Party, also respected at that debate. And of, um, um, finally, Fela Durotoyi of the um, Alliance for New Nigeria. He is um, a public speaker and a, a leadership uh, expert. He is also respected at that debate. Um, the question of who is showing up and who is not showing up has come up several times. Um, but it doesn't matter. Let's, let's, let's you know believe that every one of them will show up because all their vice presidential candidates showed up. But, you know, what would you want to see at the presidential debate today? Um, what are you expecting? What do you think will happen? And what would you rather see, you know, at the presidential debate? But just to give you uh, a brief history of debates in the world. Now, um, the culture of organized presidential debate emanated from the United States of America and is one of the many cultures we have copied, you know, Nigeria has copied from that great nation. Um, it may interest, you know, students of political history to know that the first ever debate in the U.S. between rivals for elective political office can be traced to 1857. You know, that's more than a century ago. Um, over over a million a millennium now uh, i'm sorry more than a century rather not a millennium um 1857 when abraham lincoln insisted on having a debate with stephen douglas on the virtue of the republic and the evil of slavery it was an unmoderated debate and what was then at stake was a senatorial seat in the state of illinois abraham lincoln last uh, lost that election but the history all right we have a call good morning gabriel Hello, good morning. Good morning, Gabriel. Um, I, I want to just uh, talk about the debate that is coming up today. Okay. I think um, uh, I would love President Muhammad Buhari to be there so that people can really understand what their plans are for Nigeria. It, it is very important because if you consider the vice presidential debate, and what Oshibato went to do there, he would understand that they are on the defensive. So the, 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 the major problem is that we've been hearing rumors that he's not going to attend the presidential debate, and I don't know why, because I really want to make up my mind on who I am going to vote for. So 
I'm really looking forward to him and him. All right, you know, uh, and I'm hoping that every other presidential candidate that will be there will ensure that they come up with their A game. Okay, Gabriel. And I'm really what, enjoying what, your program. I want to ask you a, a question, Gabriel. Thank you very much. I want to ask you a question. What do you think is the implication if the president doesn't show up? Sorry, I did not get that. What did you say? If the president doesn't show up, what do you think will be the implication of that? Okay, well... If it, well, if he doesn't show up, it means it means that uh, you know people will draw up conclusions. It means that they don't really have an agenda for Nigeria, which means that they are afraid, or or they don't even have an idea. You know, because this is a particular platform for every presidential candidate to win more electorate to their side. So the APC has to be very careful. They must be very mindful of the fact that many Nigerians will be watching. It is very essential that they come and uh, present the president so that he can, you know, defend himself at least with uh, the agenda and plan of the APC. All right. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right, now, um, just before Gabriel called, um, Gabriel has spoken to the fact that, look, um, the president has to be there because it was reported in the paper, some, even on the news some time ago, um, that the president, the, the, his party said the president might not come for the debate. But every Nigeria wants to see the president at the debate uh, because debate mostly is not for, there are people who have made up their mind on who to vote for, but debates are usually for undecided voters, people who have not made up their mind. That is how they make up their mind. So it is imperative and important um, that everyone, everybody who has been invited shows up. But let's also know that there are not just five uh, presidential candidates in the country. Um, INEC released a list of presidential candidates for the 2019 elections, and so far we have 72 presidential candidates. But at this debate, we're only going to be seeing five presidential candidates. So um, it means that there's still a lot of research that has to be done into um, the remaining 67 candidates who will not be at that debate. But just before Gabriel called, we're still, we're still expecting your call. You can call in and let us know um, what you want to see at a debate today and the qualities of your pres uh, preferred candidate. And, uh, but just before Gabriel called, uh, we're looking at the history of debates in the world. And we've told you that debates started in America. And the first ever debate that was held in the world was held in 1857 between um, um, Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas, and it wasn't even a presidential debate, it was a senatorial debate. And the topic of that debate was the virtue of the republic and the evil of slavery. And you know, we also told you that Abraham Lincoln lost that debate, but lost that election rather. But it became the, the you know, that, that gave birth to the tradition of debate in the, in the world. Uh, we, have, we have a call from Tunde, Tunde who's calling from Ikeja. Good morning, Tunde. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Okay, Emma, regarding the topic, you see, it's only right that they are supposed to have a debate with that everybody, I mean, presidential candidates, will definitely give out their agenda and what they have for the country. Now, but the question now is, if the APC has come out to say that the president that the presidential candidate happens to be um president mm -hmm. Buhari, will not be showing up obviously like the last caller had said that means that they probably do not even have something in for the country or they are not even confident in their candidate and if a political party is not confident in, in a candidate, then what are we talking about? I mean, what are we even, what, what's this country about? So I don't know if this is a really democratic society, and I believe that we all know who we should be voting for. I'm not calling to um, defend anybody or anything, but I feel that one of the qualities of a true leader, especially the number one person in the country, is having foresight and agenda for its people. And if you cannot bring that to the table, what that tells the people 
is that you don't have anything. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Tunde. Um, we know that, you know, there's still so much um, um, contest as to, as to um, whether the president is going to show up or not. Uh, uh, if it, and, you know, today has said if he doesn't show up, it means that he, might, he doesn't have an ag agenda. But we know that the president also released a document um, when, he, when he flagged off his campaign. Um, I think the document is called Next Level that contains what they've done um, in this administration and what they intend to do, you know, going forward if, if they are elected in, in, in the coming election. So um, he will tell you that his agenda is, is right there. But again, we also know that every president who has, you know, um, led this country has never attended a presidential debate. You can, you can, you can, you can, you know, um, take, go back to 1999. I'm talking about the Fourth Republic. Um, there is no president who has attended, who has attended a presidential debate. Um, in 1999, uh, for his two tenures, President uh, Basanjo, did, former President Basanjo didn't attend. Um, late President um, Yeradwa didn't attend. Um, good president, former President Goodluck Jonathan didn't attend. So even in, in, in 2015, President Muhammad Buhari didn't attend and he won. So all of these people have won not attending presidential, candidate, presidential debates. So does it mean that Nigerians prefer candidates who don't attend presidential debate because we're the ones who vote for them? Is it that we prefer candidates who do not attend presidential debates? Do we see it as a show of strength when candidates do not attend presidential debate because they go on to win elections? It also might also mean that winning elections in Nigeria, um, debate is not a prerequisite for winning elections in Nigeria. So um, those are the things that we're talking about on the program today. How seriously should we start taking debates in this country? Because in America, um, if you don't go for debates, there is no chance. In fact, you're not even going to be considered um, considered for any any of the uh, elected position. You won't even be considered during election. It's like you're telling the people that I don't take you seriously, so I'm not going to show up for this debate. It's a sign of respect for the people in America. But here in the country, um, again, debate is new to our culture. In, in, okay, in, uh, we have a call for, from Ken. Ken, good morning. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good morning. Yeah, a uh, brief contribution to the topic. The idea present I will explain this to uh, this uh, 2019 is um, a president that uh, will be up and doing. A president that will encourage me, not a president that will tell me that I'm lazy. Even when I'm lazy, at least. If you encourage me that at least you are doing well, I need a president that will talk to me that will discuss the, the, the Nigerian programs, the plans ahead with me. You remember that this current government, this 2015 election, this current president now did not come out for debate. And because of the way things happened, we voted for him. But this time around, no, 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 it's not possible. The kind of voting that happened at 2015 cannot happen in 2019. We want to listen to you. Tell us what you have for, what are your plans? So far, these three years or four years, what have you done? What do you really want to do in the next four years? It's just so unfortunate that this country, we are not well enlightened about things. The very day Nigeria grow up to stop voting uh, because of party A or party B, mm. and start looking at the, the track record, the individual credibility, and what the person can offer. Because this debate of a thing, in, in the developed world, that is how they know who, who will help them, who will do things better for them. Because when you listen to them, the plans they have or how they want to achieve those things, at least we'll be able to reason, we'll judge. We people that are listening to them will judge. But see here, this are just done anyhow. And this one is a TDT. You do this one. Because they have money, they will cry crowd everywhere. Because people are not enlightened. There are other small, small political parties that their candidate can do as wonderful within four years in this country. You yourself, you know them very well. Mm. There are other small, small political parties that the candidate that they presented, they are excellent. They will, if, they, if, they come, if you come to the economy, they will draw the map for you, show you where the problem is, how they want to achieve that, how they will bring us out of it. If you come to security, they will tell you where the thing starts and how they want to bring us out of it. These are the people that have something to offer. Not uh, blaming the past government. Have they done this? No. Have they done this? No. No, stop those things. Not, we just need to wake up in this country and stop all this being uh, party, party B of a thing. 
can look at individual. What do they have to offer us? What are the solutions? How do you want to take us out of this? So this 2019, I am looking up to a place. They just supported that those political parties, they will not be able to to to, to muzzle any any more food because the way we are, we are still doing with party A, party B of a thing. Mm. Because this is the party that has been existing. So, but if we can really understand that, look, we need to grow beyond this political party of a thing. Look at the individual. I think those those guys I'm talking about will be given the opportunity to to rule this country, and I believe very well that they will do far better. I don't need to mention them, but right. if I'm permitted, this Morgan is one of the people that I'm talking about. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Ken. Thank you, Ken, for calling in. Um, Ken is talking about uh, the fact that look. We have to expand our tentacles beyond two uh, parties because it looks like the conversation is surrounded, uh, surrounds rather two parties. Uh, we've always talked about APC, PDP, but when you look at the INEC list, there are 72 candidates on that list. Um, you have a lot of alternative. For those who always say, look, we don't have alternatives, um, that, that means 72 is a lot of alternatives for people to pick from. So you can look at that list, um, engage these candidates, and follow their policies, follow their plans, vote for the one that you prefer, you know, that, it, that their agenda resonates with you. So continue to engage the candidates, continue to follow their policies. Don't just limit your mindset to two parties, you know, and that's what um, Ken, Ken is talking about. But away from that now, uh, we're giving you a history of uh, debates in the world, and we've, talk, we've talked about how it started in the United States, the first ever debate in 1857. Um, but away from that, Abraham Lincoln uh, would later win the presidency in 1860 in an election which featured no political debate. So uh, the first time uh, Abraham Lincoln won the, presidential, the presidency, he did not debate also. So it looks like um, not debating is a strict, but we, in America now, it is almost you know like a law you have to debate. And in fact, there were no debates between presidential candidates until 1952, uh, when the League of Women Voters organized debates between presidential candidates. The culture of televised debate would later become formalized with a televised debate between John F. Kennedy and Richard Nixon in 1960. Uh, the hand, um, the more charismatic JFK on the debate, while on earlier radio debate had been won by Nixon, Nixon, and Nixon was said to have appeared rather shiftly on television, suggesting he could hardly be trusted, and that contributed and that contributed to his loss of the election. So, um, Nixon, it is said that Nixon lost against John F. Kennedy because he uh, appeared shiftly on, like he wasn't, it looked like he wasn't prepared. His his look, his 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 manner of um, approach to issues, you know, made him lose that election. So Americans also look at how your your appearance, you know, when you are when you're coming for a debate, how you are dressed, you know, your confidence, your charisma when when you appear for a debate so it means a lot to americans it's part of their culture now for for um the candidates to debate but here in the country uh well, it's new to us and i say new not because um it it's in number of years but because we still have many people who say we still have a nascent democracy um in the fourth republic we know that in 1999 um the idea of debates was introdu introduced then in the country and so it's it's still new to us um but now people are saying, should we forgive those who do not come for debate because it's new, or should we ensure, you know, make it known to them that look, if you don't come for debate, you won't have a vote. How important are debates to to us here in this country? How important should we take them? Should we formalize them and make them part of our constitution? That look, it's now constitutional for any candidate who wants to become president or governor or governor or you know whatever position in this country must appear in a debate just to let people know what their agenda is or should it just be one of those things we take you know uh, lightly here in the country but we are going to take a break now and when we return we'll continue the conversation on the qu qualities of your preferred candidate <laughs>
These are tips to help stay strong and healthy. Learn to do stretching exercises when you wake up. It boosts circulation and digestion and eases back pain. Studies have shown that eating a proper breakfast is one of the most positive things you can do if you're trying to lose weight. Breakfast skippers tend to gain weight. A balanced diet includes fresh fruits or fruit juice, a high-fiber breakfast cereal, low-fat milk or yogurt with wheat toast and a boiled egg. Many people do not know how to brush your teeth properly. Improper brushing can cause and much damage to your teeth and gums as not brushing at all. Lots of people do not brush for long enough, floss nor see a dentist regularly. Hold your toothbrush in the same way that you would hold a pencil and brush for at least two minutes. This includes brushing the teeth, the junction of the teeth and gums, the tongue and the roof of the mouth. Get your daily calcium by chugging milk or eating yogurt. It will keep your bones strong. Remember that your bones density declines after the age of 30. You need at least 200 mg daily, which you should combine with magnesium or it simply would not be absorbed. Tomato is a superstar in the fruit in Virgil Pantheum. Potatoes and tomatoes contain lycopene, a powerful cancer fighter. They are also rich in vitamin C. The good news is that cooked tomatoes are also nutritious, so use them in pasta, soups and casseroles, as well as salads. Tomatoes and apples can reduce the risk of asthma and chronic lung diseases. Both contain the antioxidant carcerin. To enjoy the benefits, eat 5 apples a week or tomato every day. We need at least 90 mg of vitamin C per day and the best way to get this is by eating at least 5 servings of fresh fruit and vegetables every day, so hit the oranges and guavas. Folic acid should be taken regularly by pregnant moms and people with a low immunity to disease. Folic acid prevents spina bifida in unborn babies and can play a role in cancer prevention. It is found in green leafy vegetables, liver, fruit and brain. Vitamins help to boost immunity agent diseases. It also assists in the healing process of diseases such as measles and is recommended by the World Health Organization. Good natural sources of vitamin A are kidneys, livers, dairy products, green and yellow vegetables, papaya, mangoes, chili peppers, red sorrel and the red palm oil. Do not have soft drinks or energy drinks while you are exercising. Stay properly hydrated by drinking enough water during your workout. Just don't overdo things as drinking too much water can also be dangerous. Do not eat carbohydrates for at least an hour after exercise. This will force your body to break down fat rather than using the food you ingest. Stick to fruits and fluids during that hour, but avoid beer. Don't smoke any of you smoke already. All right, welcome back. Many thanks for staying with us on the program. We're still looking at your qualities of your qualities of your preferred candidate. Uh, we know that in the country, many people say that you know the reason we're where we are as a country is because of uh, of leadership. Uh, you know, they say leadership is the reason why we face some of the challenges we face. And today, um, Nigerians will be given the opportunity to listen to to um, the some of the leaders you know some of some of the people who are asking to be uh, leaders of this country uh, we're going to be in a, de a televised debate today we're going to have five presidential candidates uh, we'll be having the presidential candidate of the all progressives congress the current uh, president president muhammad buhari uh, we're also going to be having former vice president atiku abubakar the people's democratic party uh, former minister of education obi ezekwisili of the allied congress people's uh, uh, party uh, sorry, people, uh, Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, ACPN. Uh, we'll also be having uh, former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Kisli Mogalu of the Young Progressives Party, YPP. And finally, we'll also have um, 
the uh, presidential candidate of the Alliance for New Nigeria, uh, which is Fela Jurotoyi. So those are the five presidential candidates we'll be having. We'll listen to them tonight on, on, um, on, on, on in a televised debate. It will also, that debate, um, let me, let's inform you that that debate will be shown here on Super Screen Television, so you can catch it up. I think it's supposed to begin at 7, uh, 7 p.m., so that debate will be shown here on Super Screen Television. You can watch it live on Super Screen. Um, but we'll be given an opportunity to figure out who we want to vote, to vote for in the 2019 election. And he, a lot of Nigerians always complain that they don't have an alternative. So there are 72 people on the list. And here are five of those 72 people to tell us your agenda. They'll be talking about, you know, asking questions from, you know, issues around the economy, around um, unemployment in the country. We'll also talk about, they'll also talk about foreign direct investment, um, issues around security, anti-corruption. And then you can actually listen to these people and decide on who you want to vote for. So tell us the qualities of your preferred candidate and then what you expect, you know, to see at the presidential debate. But, you know, just before the break, um, let's also know, let, let you know that our phone lines are now open. You can call us in, let us know um, the qu qualities of your preferred candidate, like we said earlier, and what you want to see at the debate. Um, Let's also um, let you know that the interesting televised debate of the pre of the pre 2011 presidential election involving Muhammad Buhari of the Den Congress for Political Change (CPC), Malam Luhu Ribadu of the Action Congress of Nigeria (ACN), and Malam Ibrahim Shekarau of the Op. Uh, People, or Nigeria People's Party, ANPP, uh, suggested it was one culture that ha was gradually taking root in our society. Uh, the then incumbent president, Gulag Jonathan, of the People's Democratic Party, seeking to be elected into the position um, he occupied, have, having succeeded President Omar um, Yaradwa, who died in office, did not participate in the debate. So in the 2011 election, President Gulag Jonathan did not participate in that debate. In the 2015 election um, that brought in President Muhammad Buhari, he also did not participate in that debate. But the thing is... Um, the importance of debates, basically, that even with the vast uh, majority of Nigerians not having access to television and electricity, the culture of televised presidential debate has crept in and should be warmly embraced. The very essence of such debates is to identify uh, a candidate with the competence and sanity to pro project and define and defend the national interest. Um, the national interest, in interest simply defined is the very reason a nation exists. It is about the prestige of such a nation and the well-being of, of its peoples. Um, it is because of the national interest that a nation goes to war, and it's also because of the same national interest that a nation quickly withdraws from war. It cannot win. So um, the reason for debates is so candidates can come and defend the national interest. And you know that it is from the national interest that we have, uh, you know, we have sectors. Uh, we have the national interest being represented in education sector. We have the national interest being, being also you know, replicated in um, the oil sector. We have the national interest being replicated in the health sector. So we need these candidates to come talk about the national interest as regards all of the sectors. What is the plan to sustain the national interest? What is the plan to build more on the national interest? That's why debates are organized and you know a lot of people have said debates should be taken seriously. Um, there are implications for candidates who do not attend debates. Um, it could prove the downfall of a, of a, of a candidate. Well, but most people would say it is, in, it is only in Western cultures that you know, when people don't attend debates, it could prove their downfall because as we have stated earlier, um, no candidate, no president in this country since 1999 have ever attended a debate and yet they have gone on to be president. So um, it, it might mean that we do not take debates as seriously in the country as we should take them. So let us know what you want to see in today's debate and the quality of your preferred candidate. We've told you the number of those who are going to be, um, uh, the names of those who are going to be at the presidential debate today, especially because the APC has also said that President Muhammad Buhari might not be attending the debate. Um, what do you think of that? And then as you watch, what would you want to see? What qualities would you want to see? I know most people have made up their mind on who they want to vote for. But usually debates are for those who have not made up their mind, those who are undecided, those who are sitting on the fence, they're not sure who they want to vote for. They like 
probably like A, they like B, they like C. So they want to see, you know, the distinguishing factor between all of the candidates and then they will make up their mind. That's why it's important for people to go for debate. But in a country like ours where a lot of people do not have um, access, maybe access to power, or access to television, especially in the grassroots area, how important is in the debate? Most of them might, might not even get a chance, or most people might not get a chance to watch the debate tonight. Um, but they are still going to vote. So how do those people make up their minds? And then we also have people who are not as literate, you know, as yeah, the rest of the population. It was said recently that about 72% of the population are not literate. So um, they might not understand some of the things or they might have a, a, a poorer understanding of the things being discussed. How do they, how do they uh, then go on to make up their minds? So it, it is, you know, in two ways. That's why it might be for that reason that debates are not so, uh, are not yet, you know, important in the country that we don't, we don't place a lot of importance on debate in the country because people will tell you that people who really vote are not as educated as, you know, um, some parts of the population that mark the market women, the bus drivers, the uh, conductors, the artisans, the people who live in very remote areas of this country, the grassroots, that the ones who actually vote, and they are not as educated educated as you know they make it, they form a, a large part of the population, but not as educated as you know the smaller parts of the population, and they are the ones who actually vote. They might not be watching the debates because. Um, of the maybe literary, uh, literacy gap, but with that, with that kind of statistics, how important then are debates in this country? We can, we can say that in American society, it might be a bit more informed than ours, so debates should be important in those societies. But in ours that, you know, we don't have as, when, I mean, we still have people, we still have that literacy gap. How important should we place, uh, what value should we place in on debates? So call us in and let us know the quality of your preferred candidates and why you think that debate should be you know important in this country should they be should we place a premium on debate should you not place a premium on debate how important should they be um, again we've told you that in, in western climes debate could go on to um, become the downfall okay we have a call from Sam good morning Sam Sam calling from his solo say the candidate is that a, I want a president that will be a Nigerian that understands that Hungary is in Nigeria, that understands that life is not created in Nigeria, that Nigerians need to be given hearing ear. That is what Nigerians are saying should be followed up. If we can have this type of president, Nigeria will be well. But for the debate, I, I say that Nigeria should use the debate because it, has, it is a record that many presidents of Nigeria don't attend the debate and we vote them in. But this time, our eyes are open. The debate can open our eyes more to understand who can deliver and who cannot deliver. Who is prepared to lead us and who is not prepared to lead us? But I would take, I encourage Nigerians to pay particular attention to this debate and give attention to it and make time to watch. It is not a, a, a mere debate. It is a debate that will take us to where we are going. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Sam, for calling in. Uh, Sam has said it is not a mere debate, it is a debate that will take us to where we're going in. And he made a very salient point that, you know, Nigerians are now uh, more aware, Nigerians are watching. Um, he, he said that in the past people got away with, uh, presidents got away with not attending debates because, you know, Ni Nigerians didn't know better. But Nigerians are more aware now and they are watching and if you don't attend debates, it might be, de if a candidate doesn't attend a debate, it might be detrimental. He also said that his quality of a preferred candidate he wants a candidate who understands that you know nigerians are hungry which is we talks on poverty and you know um, also on the economy he also talks about the fact that he wants a, a candidate who understands that you know um, nigerians should be safe in nigeria which talks on security and then um in a, a candidate who does you know what nigerians say uh, which also touches on implementation so he's talking about a candidate who understands uh, the poverty situation and has strategic plans 
to alleviate it and then the candidate to understand their security challenges and then who has plans to also ensure that we, he fights you know insecurity in the country and the candidate who is big on implementation when you say you're going to do something it's not just about making laws but you know when you say you're going to do something you implement all right we have akim calling from Suri labor good morning akim okay hello good morning yeah. Uh, what I see about the day, some people cannot fully explain themselves when they, are, when they were talking. But it's what's in mind of someone. So the bass is just like a passing a stage, like a musician, for people to see how they can perform. Mm. Uh, now, for someone can declare it as a without any fault, I believe that person is honest. So, what I'm now saying now, I'm not campaigning for anybody, mm. but for people to see that someone see I'm this, and they check and they make him like that. So there's no for someone to know what's right. The right is there. For for someone to know what is wrong, the wrong is there. So we don't need to worry ourselves much. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Akin. Um, that's Akin calling from Surulere. Um, there was something he said that I found very profound. Um, I think that was one of the uh, uh, very, is a very wise thing to say. He said that you cannot say that you're a musician and then you don't perform. I mean, the only way to know um, that someone is a musician is by singing, by performing. And so if you cannot, you cannot say that, you know, um, you want to run as, you want to, you, you want to run as a, president, a presidential candidate in the country, you want to run for elections and then you don't go for debate. How do people then know um, what your agenda is? How do people know what your plans are? You know, um, and, and also, you know, um, how do they engage you? They want to hear you speak. They want to see you. Campaigns, usually, uh, I know people will say, oh, they go for campaigns. But it is often said that campaigns are for party members, debates are for you know the citizens. Because most times when you go for campaigns, it is basically party members who attend campaigns, and people don't go there. Uh, you, you won't find the average Nigerian going for campaigns or rally political political party rallies because for them they don't think it's any of their business. But the debates are what Nigerians really take seriously because this is their business. Now we want to hear you talk to us because campaigns they, they believe in during campaign you are talking to your uh, party members, but during debates then you are talking to you know all of Nigeria so um, that was a very profound thing that Akin said that you cannot say you're a musician and you don't perform so you cannot say that you want to run for elections and you don't attend debates and town hall meetings to talk to the people about your agenda it is very important that you know um, candidates show up in, in debate there are, there are people who already made up their mind from the vice presidential debate uh, from the vice presidential debate some people already made up their minds on who they want to vote for because the all the vice the vice presidential candidates who were uh, invited attended and you know everyone um did uh, i mean they laid out laid out their plan or um, we have a call from david david calling in uh from go on yeah. good morning david hello hello good morning good morning, good morning. Good morning. i am blessed thank you very much yeah i believe that i believe that that nigeria is not enlightened more than ever more than ever mm. when nigeria was we are not before in internet. Now we are exposed, we are exposed. more than ever. So anyone trying to hide from some debate, he deceiving himself. One, what you do not have, you cannot offer it. You offer what you have. So we are trying to see people who have something else there, not your size, or your money, or your name, or political party, that I believe what somebody can offer it, he will say it out. That will determine where we will follow. What you do not have, you cannot give us. You begin to guess and trying to find people who are for. But what you have, you know how to amend it and put it in order. That's what you are doing. That's certainly. 
Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, David, you. for calling in. Um, one line I picked from David is that you cannot offer what you do not have. Um, I mean, you only give what you have. If somebody has, if somebody asks you for, um, if you want to buy something, for example, and the person selling saying saying it's hundred naira, you only have fifty. You can't go on and say, "Would you give it to me?" Um, you only offer what you have. So, um, he's saying that the only way that Nigerians will know what you have is by what you say at the debate. Um, so it is important for people to go for the debate just so that Nigerians can know what you have to offer. It's from your agenda that Nigerians will know what you have to offer. So it is quite imperative that people go for debate. Um, we still want to hear from you. Um, how important is it that you know? How important is it that candidates go for debate? Um, should we make debate a tradition here in the country? And also let us know um, the qualities of your preferred candidate. Um, we're talking about the issues, you know, what happens when people don't go for debate. And just earlier, we, we said that it could prove the downfall of a candidate who otherwise could have won in the election. Um, why bother then to participate in, 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 in them? Um, just to give you this, this reason, President Lyndon Johnson refused to debate with Senate, uh, Barry, uh, Senator Barry Goldwater in 1964. He was leading in the polls and public speaking was not his forte. Similarly, in 1968, Richard Nixon, who again contested the presidency with Senator George McGovern, refused to debate. Nixon was a front runner in the opinion polls, and his non participation in a televised debate might have been informed by his earlier experience with John Kennedy in 1960. So um, there are people who have also not gone for a debate and went on to you know, lose in the elections because they did not go for the debate. And just like um, our last caller, David, said, um, that people won't know what you have to offer when you don't go for debate. And then you know, issues of leadership is now taken so seriously in the country. Um, a lot of Nigerians just want improvements, improvements in, in life, in lifestyle, in improvements in their welfare. And so because of what they've had to go through, in, in the past years, and I'm talking about you know from the inception of our, 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 the Fourth Republic, Nigerians are becoming more aware. They're becoming more aware as to politics. They're becoming more aware as to leadership. They, you know, they're becoming more aware as to you know what, what go good governance means. You know, and because the world is also now a global village, we're seeing what's happening in other countries, and we're wondering why it, we have not, it cannot be replicated here. So a lot of Nigerians now are more aware. You know, they are watching these candidates closely. Um, a lot of people say that it's going to be a very surprising election. Um, it might not, you know, that this is an election that, that is going to surprise a lot of people the most, that the things that we do not believe might happen will happen in this election. But we're watching closely. I want to say that it is not enough to say, this is my preferred candidate. You have to also go and collect your PVC. Because most times, you know, uh, we have a call from Wale. Wale calling from Ikbaja. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Wale. Yeah, a great evening. Thank you. Yes, I want to I want to confess to you that debate is very Hello Wally. All right, uh, we lost that call. Please, Wally, call us back. We would like to hear from you just before we round off on the program. Um, so please call us back. Um, we're talking about uh, those who, who say debate is very important. We understand that debate is very important, but have you collected your PVC? When you watch the debate tonight and you're impressed by a candidate, do you have the PVC to vote for that candidate? Because it's not one, it's one thing to say, oh, I like this candidate, I prefer this candidate, but have you collected your PVC? INEC is coming closer to you this period. They are going to be in words, you know, around you. Go and collect your PVC so that when you watch the debate tonight, when you listen to these candidates, um, you can decide. And when you make up your mind on who to vote for, you're sure that you have the PVC to vote. Um, so go and collect your PVC. Go to your ward, go to your local government, um, go and collect your PVC. Some people are complaining that the process is too difficult, but it's, a lot of people say they went there and they, they, they collected their PVC immediately. So it might be different in different, in, you know, as, uh, in different locations, but it doesn't matter. Um, Nigeria, always understand that Nigeria is a stake at every election. So um, it, it's, and uh, Nigeria is us. If Nigeria is a stake, it means that we, you know, our own welfare is a stake. So put that in mind. The welfare, our welfare is a 
stake, the welfare of the next generation is also at stake. What kind of Nigeria do you want to leave for your children and your children's children? That should always be in your mind. What kind of leadership do you think you deserve? What kind of leadership do you think your, your, your children deserve? So go and collect your PVC and vote for that kind of leader. Um, it's, quite, it's imperative that we all participate in elections. They all, you know, there's a general saying that leaders are not only elected by those who vote. And leaders are mostly elected by those who do not vote. Because if you do not vote, you're giving a chance to the other person who you do not want to win to win. So go and collect your PVC and ensure to vote. Uh, we're going to, um, that we, we told you earlier that, that um, the debate, presidential debate, is going to be showing on Super Screen Television. You can tune in. Um, it usually begins from 7. You can tune in and watch that debate live here on Super Screen Television. We'll bring it to you live. You can watch it here on Super Screen. And we're back here on Super Dawn on Monday to, have, to analyze you know, some of the points made in that debate. Many thanks for those of you who called in and those of you who try to call in. Most times we understand that when we're on the program, you know, um, people try to call in and we have a lot of network jams of people. We, we don't get a lot. Um, people, most people don't get through. But thanks to everyone who tried calling, everyone, everyone who watched and everyone who called in. I am Precious Amayo. Many thanks for watching.